This is the food fraud tabletop exercise. This is video nine, evaluation and closing. First, uh, to review the entire module, it's a complex issue for many reasons. And that's why it's such a challenge and why there's such a need for our coordination. There's a lack of clarity of reporting or jurisdiction. Maybe it's clarity in the sense that once an incident occurs, to know exactly where the priority lies and responsibility is, is, has a lack of clarity. Because while the laws may be clear, there's different priority setting, resources, and others, other uh, situations. So it's really hard to understand sometimes who should take responsibility and at what point does an issue uh, shift from one agency to another, such as from public health to a law enforcement agency. There's concerns about physical safety or violence. And this is a very important point for the food inspectors because this is a different type of an inspection. It's a criminal investigation. And there's an important um, understanding uh, or, or a point, important insight of, of the point at which it shifts from a routine food safety inspection to that criminal investigation. The lack of transparency that follows the food fraud to occur also is a vulnerability for food-related attacks. So one thing we've got is, is when we look at these vulnerabilities in the supply chain for food fraud, then we actually are identifying vulnerabilities for food-related attacks. So that product that can be moved in and out of the supply chain with stealth for economic gain could also be an opportunity for the more dangerous types of public health attacks. So addressing food fraud is actually a very efficient way to increase the transparency across the supply chain, including for those attacks. In the absence of any evidence of an attack, who gets contacted and why? This is really a challenge. So bad fish. <laughs> Um, what is that and where does that fit into the hierarchy? And if it is transferred from one group to another, is there a priority setting? Is there someone that can actually receive it? So this is really an important point. Insight from the reports from our previous um, pilot studies is um, really the question of, is there a threat of violence to inspectors and at what point does that occur? When should law enforcement officers be involved? A key is there really should be a decision-making process or a trigger at some point to know when a, a food safety inspector starts to get to the point that it's no longer food safety investigation, but more of a crime investigation. And then there should be processes in place to identify who gets called and how they, how they get involved. What was learned from the series of suspicious activity reports? So along the way, you'll, you'll, you'll conduct suspicious activity reports. Now, when we look at this from a food safety or food public health based risk-based approach, then it sometimes has a different um, focus or different level of, of, of uh, concern than it does from a, a you know, more general suspicious activity report, but we can learn from these. What is the best practice to gathering information on food fraud? Well, just that whole, whole process of suspicious activity, and when it's for economic gain without a public health threat or without that harm, then we've got a different set of, of possible information because we've got a different set of triggers or goals. For an incident, what would happen? What should happen? How can that be enabled? So the key here now is for us together that to ask the question among your group, when a food fraud incident does occur, what would happen right now? <laughs> what should happen? And how can we move from what would to what should? And at this point, we'll adjourn and say thank you very much for all your work and activity. Please feel free to contact us. We're constantly trying to evolve and develop and expand this, this training to be more relevant, um, so do contact us. Appendix. Firstly, we'll just quickly look at the suspicious, suspicious activity reports. Who, here, what, when, and what did they do with the intel? So the concept here uh, of how, how information comes in and what we do with it, we'll use this tabletop exercise as an example. You know, a couple different ways information comes in, a citizen calls a diffusion center or an agency. Another scenario is a food inspector spots something odd, such as using the freebie scenario uh, here. A citizen calls the state food safety agency 800 number. So just information randomly comes in. These are all ways that we become alert, alerted of suspicious activity. And finally, a citizen complains to a retailer. Uh, so these are different ways that they do come in. So what we'd like to say is just uh, kind of conduct the activity, have the closing, and uh, thank you very much.
We do have additional information and videos on some of the industry response. Next.